Hello, welcome back to the Mark Janard Show, the tech show about hacking. In this video, I'm gonna go over SQL injection. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna look at it from a technical perspective. So without further ado, let's be hackers. We're going dark. As I speak, you're gonna be seeing the code uh, on your screen so you can just follow through as I'm talking, okay? All right. So let's start off with a basic SQL injection attack directed at a web application and leading to privilege escalation to OS root. SQL injection is one of the most dangerous vulnerabilities a web application can be prone to if a user's input is being passed, unvalidated, and unsanitized as part of an SQL query, the user can manipulate the query itself and force it to return different data than what it was supposed to return. Okay, so we're going to see how and why SQLI attacks have such a big impact on application security. So let's take a look at an example of vulnerability code. Before having a practical look at this injection technique, let's first quickly see what is an SQL injection. Let's suppose that we have a web application that takes parameter, okay, uh, via a get request and queries the SQL database to get article content. You will see as I'm talking, it will be the underlying PHP source code is the following. You know, it's the article parameter uh, is assigned to article variable without any uh, sanitization or validation. The article parameter is passed as part of the query, right? A typical page in this web application would look as follows. If a user sets the value of the article parameter to one and one equals one, the query becomes, you know, the query equals select, and then you see that, uh, the star from articles and then the where arc, uh, article ID, etc. In this case, the content of the page does not change because the two conditions in the SQL statement are both true. There is an article with an ID of one and one equals to one, which is true. If a user changes the parameter to one and one equals two, it returns nothing because one is not equal to two. That means that the user is controlling the query string and can adjust it accordingly to the SQL code to manipulate the results. So here's the attack. We're going to go over step by step, right? how dangerous the exploitation of an SQL injection can be. Just for reference, the following scenario is executed on a Linux machine running Ubuntu 16.04.1 LTS, PHP 7.0, MySQL 5.7, and WordPress 4.9. For the purpose of this demonstration, it is performed a security audit on a sample web application. During the penetration test, it was identified a plugging endpoint that accepts the user ID via underscore the get request and displays the username. You will see it, okay? The endpoint is directly accessible, which could indicate weak security. The first thing someone would do is to manipulate the entry point, right? The user input and the underscore get parameter and observe the response. See, what we're looking for is to see if our input causes the output of the application to change in any way. Ideally, what we want to see an SQL error, which could indicate that the input is parsed as part of a query. There are many ways to identify whether an application is vulnerable to SQL injection. One of the most common and simple ones is the use of a single quote which under certain circumstances breaks the database query. The MySQL error that we get confirms the app that the application is indeed vulnerable. At this point, it is almost certain that soon we will be able to exfiltrate data from the backend database of the web application. If our input is being parsed as part of the query, we can control it using SQL commands. If we can control the query, we can control the results. We have identified the SQL injection vulnerability. Now let's proceed with the attack. We want to get access to administration area of the website. So we assume that we don't know the structure of the database or that the administrator used non-default naming slash prefixes when installing WordPress. We need to find table names to be able to grab administrator's password later. 
first we need to find out how many columns and the current table has. We will use column ordering to achieve that. Order by is used to set the order of the results. You can order either by column name or by the number of the column. In this case, we need to use the number of the column. If the number that we pass in the parameter is less than the total number of columns in the current table, the output of the application should not change because the SQL query is valid. However, if the number is larger than the total number of columns, we will get an error because there is no such column. In our case, we have identified 10 columns. If we use a higher number, we don't get any results. Depending on the setup, we, may, we might get an error. Now that we know how many columns the current table has, we will use union to see which column is vulnerable. Union select is used to combine results from multiple select statements into a single result. The vulnerable column is the one whose data is being displayed on the page. Uh, so yes, so as we can see, the number 10 is being displayed on the page, which means this is the vulnerable, this is the vulnerable column. We can confirm this by replacing it with version uh, parentheses, which will show the, the MySQL version. Next, we need to find the table names, which we will then use to exfiltrate data. The group concat function concatenates results into a string. The information underscore schema is a database that stores information about other databases. The database function returns the name of the current database. Now that we have the table structure, we can query the database to get the admin's credentials from the table WP underscore users. The query returns the admin's password hash. To find the password for this hash, we will use a well-known password recovery software named Hashcat. This software offers various methods of cracking a password. We will try a dictionary attack with a relatively small list containing 96 million passwords. After downloading Hashcat as well as the password list, we run the following command. We've been lucky and we're able to recover the password within a few minutes. The recovered password is, uh, you know, the 10987654321. Unless two-factor authentication is in place, the admin's password should be sufficient to access the website's back end. Once we do that, the options are limitless. It is important to note that at the current stage, we have full admin access to the website's backend user database, which means we can impersonate any user login, access any page slash posts, including those with sensitive data, export all the data, including users, insert into tables, drop tables, and pretty much do anything we want. So let's see how far we can get. There are third-party WordPress plugins that could allow us to execute shell commands or upload new files. However, we will avoid those. Instead, to further escalate this attack, we will use Weevily, which is a popular lightweight PHP backdoor. After downloading and unpacking the software, we will first create an agent that will be injected into the WordPress site, which will give us the ability to execute system commands under the low privilege web server account. The following command will create a file which must be uploaded on the target system. Instead of uploading the file, we will use existing WordPress template files to inject the contents of agent.php. We navigate to the appearance editor, which is by default enabled, and inject the code of agent.php into the header.php file. Now the backdoor agent is in place, we need to initiate a connection to fit it from our local computer. We injected the agent into the theme header so we can specify any WordPress page as a target because the header is included in all template files. As we can see below, we have successfully initiated a connection to our backdoor agent. Running the ID command returns the current user, which is the WW um, data, right? We also see that the host name is Windows and the current working uh, directory is the WordPress. On the victim's end, this is what the request sent to the backdoor look like in the log. You will see it. On our local machine, we, we, we also start a net 
Cats listener so that we can create a reverse shell connection from the target to our computer. We now send the following command to our backdoor agent to initiate a reverse shell connection. The netcat listener shows that a connection has been established. We now have a low privilege shell on the target machine. What we want is to escalate our privileges and get root access. The, uh, the UME <laughs> A command returns enough information for us to proceed with the attack. We are interested in the kernel version. We have found a privilege escalation exploit, which works on this kernel version. We download and compile it on our local machine. Now we use the reverse shell connection to download the exploit to the target machine. We grant the execute permission on the exploit by running the ch mode, the, the plus x that, and then we run it. After a few moments, the privilege escalation is successful and we can see that we are running as root. At this point, we have full root access to the target machine, which means that the security triangle of confidentiality, integrity, and availability has been completely compromised. This can be disastrous for an organization because an attacker can read, edit, delete confidential private files on the server, which may include emails, files containing passwords, SSL certificates, database with data of third parties, which may contain sensitive information such as credit card numbers, addresses, names, telephones, cell phones, right? Financial information such as invoices, payroll and agreements, private images or videos, use the machine to attack slash access other computers slash servers internally, right? Pivoting, use the machine to deliver malware to users, create new users, monitor traffic, etc. It is important to note that the machine was running on a default setup without any changes, which made the attack easier. The following factors were critical uh, to the successful exploitation of this vulnerability. The web application was vulnerable to SQL injection, one of the most dangerous vulnerabilities for an application. A vulnerability scanning tool would have detected it and given information on how to use it. There was no WAF, which is Web Application Firewall, in place to detect the SQL injection exploitation. A WAF could block the attack even if an application is vulnerable. There is no intrusion detection or intrusion prevention system in place. Many such systems keep a database with hashes of all the monitored files. If a file is modified, a, its hash changes and the system notifies the administrator about potentially malicious activity. This means that changes done to header.php, right, the, we the Weevilly backdoor in injected, could have been detected. The OS was not up to date, which allowed the privilege escalation to be successfully exploited. So that was kind of like a step-by-step -step process of an SQL injection. I hope you enjoyed it. Do you think that there is an easier way to do what I've done? I want to know your opinion. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the notification bell. I love you. Stay safe. See you on the next video.